Hi there and welcome to Upcycled Adulting Reclaimed Midlife, where we're here to help you upcycle your real life into your best life during midlife. Today we're going to be talking about hormone replacement therapy. That's right. And whether you think hormone replacement therapy is an option for you or not, I invite you to stick around so that you can learn about this very, very important health aspect of perimenopause, menopause, and beyond. It's going to be incredibly insightful and you're going to learn so much here today. Don't forget to subscribe because you don't want to miss a single bit of content related to perimenopause, menopause, or postmenopause. And you also don't want to miss learning more about how you can reclaim your midlife and start living the very best life you can and the best health you can have. So let's get going talking about HRT. Now, some of you may not know this, but I actually was told by several doctors, excellent doctors I know and trust, that I am not a candidate for HRT. That is because my breast cancer risk is at about 27%. I go for four specific breast hair visits a year, an MRI, a mammogram, and two breast care specialist checkups. So I am regularly in contact with people who are checking me for specifically breast cancer. I've had several biopsies, but the biggest reason why I am not a candidate is that my sister was diagnosed with breast cancer at 45 and I have a second degree relative who was diagnosed in their 50s. So that has my doctors just a bit concerned. I have been through all the genetic screening. I am negative for the BRCA gene, but due to these two relatives having breast cancer and some additional lifestyle factors, my breast cancer risk is elevated. And when you have an elevated breast cancer risk, everyone thinks that you cannot use HRT. Now that is a little bit antiquated and it's a little bit reductive. Um, so we're going to dig into that a little bit today because I actually am on HRT very, very safely. At the end of this video, I'm going to talk about how to find a menopause specialist to help you navigate your symptoms and to find out truly if HRT is off the table or on the table for you specifically. So let's get started with what is HRT. During perimenopause, our hormones start to fluctuate. And as we get into menopause and postmenopause, they decline. Now that means that we have less estrogen and progesterone being produced. One of the things that so many people don't know is that every single organ in your body has estrogen receptors. That means your brain, your heart, all of your body has estrogen receptors and estrogen is incredibly important to keeping you healthy. Once we get past menopause and our estrogen is in decline, the risk of cardiovascular disease goes way up. In addition, our risks for osteoporosis, sarcopenia, which is muscle loss, and cognitive decline and even cognitive disease also goes way up. Estrogen is very important to our bodies. Now I hear a lot of women saying, but it's natural and it's normal and we should just go through it naturally. The only issue with that train of thought is that the average age of menopause hasn't changed. What has changed is our life expectancy. And to maintain quality of life, especially between menopause and onward, estrogen can be very, very important. That being said, it doesn't mean that you have to wait until after menopause to start using HRT. So often that is a misunderstanding about HRT. Research has shown that it's actually best to start using HRT earlier and sooner. Many of the studies that have shown negative outcomes from HRT were performed on women over 65 who were more than 10 years out from menopause. 
when we actually research what happens when we give HRT to women in perimenopause, women in early menopause, the outcomes are much different. And we find that there is a overall preservation of health and a lengthening of lifespan. So it's important to know that timing of HRT can make an incredible difference. In addition to that, some of the benefits of HRT include a reduction of symptoms. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, well, I can just push through, I can just tolerate it. But I think it's really important to point out that symptoms of menopause often last anywhere from seven to 20 years. That's right. So many women think that once they hit menopause, their symptoms will dissipate. And that's not necessarily true. Oftentimes what we see when we hit menopause, which is that one year mark from our last period, what we actually see is either a change in symptoms or an intensification of some of our symptoms. This can be a really big deal. This isn't just about, are you tough enough? To get through it because one of the most profound symptoms of menopause and perimenopause is sleep disruption and whether you find yourself waking up at 3 a.m with anxiety or you find yourself struggling to stay in bed because you urgently need to use the bathroom or you have night sweats right those sleep disruptions are incredibly problematic a lack of sleep increases our rates for injury and increases incidence of almost all chronic diseases, including diabetes, certain types of cancer, heart disease, cognitive decline, etc. So not sleeping because of your perimenopause or menopause symptoms is actually one of the biggest problems we face. In addition, lack of sleep has been connected to every other symptom of menopause, meaning it makes all of your other symptoms worse. So one of the most important things you can do in perimenopause and menopause is safeguard your sleep, be able to sleep really well. And we're going to dig in in a future video to how to ensure that you're getting the best sleep you possibly can. But most certainly one of the things that can really help you here is HRT. Now there are two different types of HRT. One is synthetic HRT. This is the one that's been around for probably the longest and that people know the most about in general. This is a type of HRT that you get from your local pharmacy, right? This is generally a medication that comes from a pharmaceutical company. It's really well known. It has a lot of testing um, and it is FDA approved. The second kind is bioidentical hormones. Now, bioidentical hormones are not synthetic. They are natural hormones. And usually you're going to get those from what's called a compounding pharmacy. Bioidentical hormones are often a great option for women because they match your natural hormones. The only issue with bioidentical hormones is that they are not FDA approved because they come from a compounding pharmacy and they are so unique to you. It can take some time to actually get the right formulation of bioidentical hormones. But if synthetic hormones make you nervous, I want you to know that that is an option. That's an option that most menopause specialists are open to and that you should absolutely be discussing with your healthcare provider. Now, there are many different delivery methods. Some of you may have heard things like um, taking estrogen or taking hormone replacement therapy increases your risk of stroke, for example. Well, mm, kind of. And one of the reasons why is because of all these different delivery methods, right? They have oral pills that you can take, patches, gels, creams, and even vaginal rings. Now, when it comes to things like the um, strain on your liver or whether or not you would have a higher risk of things like stroke or blood clots, those things can be mitigated sometimes by different delivery methods. Meaning when we're not taking those hormones orally and they're not going through our digestive system, it is less likely to have an impact on our um, 
blood clotting or stroke risk or liver risk. So that's a really important thing to know. In addition, it's important to know that some of these delivery methods give you systemic hormone replacement therapy, meaning they give you estrogen or progesterone that is throughout your body. It affects all the organs in your body. It replaces estrogen or interacts with estrogen receptors throughout your body. However, some of these delivery methods are very specific and pointed. For example, there are creams and vaginal rings that specifically treat vaginal issues. So you would apply them directly to or inside the vagina and they would help to resolve things like vaginal dryness um, or painful intercourse or decreased libido. So you can get really targeted hormone replacement therapy or you can get systemic hormone replacement therapy. Now, some of the cons of HRT are that there are certain types of health risks that can be associated with HRT, including things like taking HRT when you're 65 or older and you have been in menopause for 10 years or more can actually increase your cardiovascular risk. There is sometimes a risk of stroke or blood clots, especially if you are a smoker. And in addition to that, there are cancer risks associated with HRT, though the breast cancer risks have been widely overstated. One of the things that's important to know here is that in the study where there was a marked concern about breast cancer risk, one, all of the scientists involved in the study have come out and said that the risks were grossly overstated, that they were actually misreported. And it's important to recognize that in that study, there were two control groups. One was women who had had a hysterectomy, meaning the removal of their uterus. They were given estrogen alone and women who still had their uterus, they were given estrogen and progesterone. Now, why does this matter? This matters because if you have a uterus, it's important to also have a secondary hormone or a secondary treatment. You can't take estrogen alone because estrogen can cause endometrial cancer. That's what they found long ago. So the women who were given estrogen alone didn't have a uterus. They didn't have a risk of endometrial cancer. They actually had a lower rate of breast cancer as compared to the regular population. The women who took both estrogen and progesterone had a very slightly elevated rate of breast cancer. However, it's important to recognize that it was a very, very small amount. And it's important to also know that if you have a higher risk of breast cancer, like me, you may be a candidate for a new type of hormone replacement therapy that includes estrogen and what's called a serum. A serum is a compound that blocks estrogen from the uterus and breast tissue to reduce cancer risk. The most known use of tamoxifen is for care of women who have had breast cancer to prevent a recurrence of it. So it's really important to recognize that that is an option. Um, one of the things that's really going to be important here is for you to sit down with your own healthcare provider. Every woman's body is different. Every woman's menopause and perimenopause experience is different. So it's essential that you sit down with your own healthcare provider to discuss the pros and cons of HRT based on your health, your lifestyle, and your family history. Now, because less than one in 10 doctors is comfortable discussing menopause, let alone treating menopause. And because of the widespread misinformation related to HRT and breast cancer risk, you may have a hard time finding a doctor who you can have a really productive conversation with about not only HRT, but menopause in general. The best place to find a doctor who specializes in menopause is through the Menopause Society. They have certification courses for healthcare providers and you can find a care provider in your area who specializes in 
menopause. They will often schedule a really long appointment so that they have time to sit down and talk to you about all of your options, about your family history, about everything that is going on for you and make the determination as to whether or not HRT is your best option. In addition, they will have other solutions to address your symptoms. They'll be able to recommend lifestyle changes. They'll be able to recommend stress management strategies. They'll be able to recommend other medications that may help resolve your symptoms. And this is incredibly important. You do not have to suffer through perimenopause or menopause. There is no trophy for that. And it's so important for you to recognize that suffering through perimenopause and menopause actually increases a lot of health risk and is very likely to shorten your life. So please speak to a certified menopause practitioner. I know that the Menopause Society certifies nurse practitioners, doctors, and physician assistants, so you should be able to find somebody to help you. And if there isn't a care provider in your community or there isn't one in network with your insurance, consider telehealth. There are so many options with telehealth for menopause treatment. One of my absolute favorites is MIDI, M-I-D-I. They are amazing. They provide telehealth appointments. You can talk through your symptoms with them. They have so many solutions and so many options and they bill most insurance companies. So you should be able to get that covered by your insurance. Do not forget to subscribe to this channel. In the future weeks, we're gonna be discussing how to navigate menopause better, how to treat symptoms in a holistic way, how to treat symptoms in natural ways if HRT isn't your favorite option. So whether you're interested in HRT or not, make sure that you subscribe here so that you can learn all the best methods for how to stay strong and healthy and vibrant through perimenopause and menopause. I'll see you soon. Bye everyone.